I'd like to welcome you all to Rose and Shingle Creek. We are so pleased that you're able to come during these very difficult times. You may have noticed, if you walked around a little bit, that the resort is eerily quiet. Sadly, like so many other hotels in Central Florida. It is now my honor to introduce Governor Ron DeSantis. Oh, well, thanks, uh, Harris, for, for hosting us. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> Look forward to uh, coming back next time when you have those uh, great events. We, um, obviously, in Florida, you know, we, we've been moving ahead uh, with reopening. Uh, we've continued to, uh, uh, to do that and, and, and really expand uh, as much as we could in a very smart, uh, safe, step-by-step -step approach. The, um, you know, the numbers that we're seeing in terms of uh, the, the virus, uh, just to put in perspective, we, the last time, I think we're about 232 total Floridians are on ventilators statewide. We haven't had that few since March. Uh, if you look at today's uh, test results, we got almost 80,000 test results. Uh, in and um, about 500 were new positive cases for Floridians, which is about 0.64 percent. And I think that, particularly outside of Southeast Florida, you've typically seen as new cases have popped up in anything more than just a smattering, typically linked to long term care facilities and to prisons. And those are obviously important, and we've had a huge effort with our long term care facilities. We're going to continue that. Uh, but those are discrete issues that need to be addressed. I think we've seen other states when they've done draconian restrictions against the general population but left the nursing homes to fend for themselves or even sent sick patients into the nursing homes. It's caused huge outbreaks and big problems. Uh, we've, uh, the Vice President and I were able to deliver some PPP uh, to a nursing home today. We have over 4,000 long-term care facilities and we got in Florida. We've got about 3,500 of them who have not had a single infection documented this whole time, uh, which is really something uh, special. We've obviously worked very hard uh, at our policy with that and are going to continue to do it going forward. But Orange County, if you look, today's test results, 0.2 percent uh, came back positive. Yesterday was 1.2 percent. I don't know that you'd have a, you could have a community anywhere in the country in terms of the millions of people that live in this metro area, in terms of the number of international travelers and travelers from all over the country and world that come to Central Florida and then look at how they've performed in terms of, of the virus. Obviously there's been cases, but the hospitalization has been very low, fatality, death rate for, fortunately very low. Uh, so we really view this area as a, as a bright spot and as a way to really help launch our return as we look to come back going forward. We have a lot of uh, key people involved with uh, some, some key industries, uh, which is great. We also have uh, Secretary Jean Scalia, Department of Labor, um, who's doing a great job. And what I really, and, and obviously thanks to the Vice President for coming. The last time I did a round table with him in Florida was <laughs> March 15th at Port Everglades with the cruise ship industry. And we were trying to figure out, okay, if you guys are going to be running these ships, are you going to continue to have people getting sick and all this? And eventually, they, I think, realized that, that, they, had to, that they, had to, they had to change some course. But um, you know, now we're in a much better spot, and I think we have an ability to come back. I would note, as I was kind of passing through, and I know we have some great attractions here, some of the attractions that are really good are, are water parks. Well, CDC just put out something, I think, yesterday talking about um, that they haven't seen evidence that this virus is transmissible in things like pools and, and in water. And so we already know outdoors is a better environment in terms of minimizing risk. Now we get the information about the water. I think there's going to be some people going down that slide at Universal and the Disney parks and some of these other ones hopefully very soon. Uh, but I think that we, when we did our most recent uh, policies, we said any theme park can submit a request to reopen, uh, get endorsement from your key local official. So here would be the mayor of Orange County. Other, other parts, it may be a little different. Provide, you know, kind of your safety plan. But we welcome that, and, and we think that, that we can move forward in a way uh, that, that is safe. And I think that 
the parks did a really good job in the lead up to this because we still had we had issues there were a lot of people in town and they did close but they stayed open that last weekend and i think really took safety to the next level and so they should be commended for that so we we want to be able to have a pathway to get some of these good things uh, back going i think we do now on the on the restaurants we're encouraging the outdoor dining and then the 50 percent I think that's going well. The 25 was tough for people, especially if you weren't open. Uh, now you have an opportunity to, uh, to at least get some folks back in. And I think the public has responded very well with how they've conducted themselves, understanding that um, you know, we want to make sure people are, are safe. So, so that's something I think is very, very important to uh, floor. And then you know, the hospitality in terms of people coming down. You know, that's just something to be something that I think if we show that we're doing well as a state, we show we continue to do well health, if we show well, you know, people will, uh, I think, de generally have more confidence. People in Florida, I think, have responded very positively to these steps so far, so we want to continue uh, on that journey. But um, we stand really ready, willing, and able to help. I know someone had mentioned there's, like, this event, that event. Like, look, if there's anything that you guys want to do that's not authorized under our set of, of structures now, this is a work in progress. I mean, I, I want to work with people uh, to be able to get to yes. And that's what I said when the hairdressers came. Well, actually, the mayor here in Orange County came to me and said, we want to get the barbers and hairdressers. And I was like, well, some of my doctors didn't necessarily have the, the way forward on that. And I was like, but you know what? My job's to get to yes. Show me what you're going to do. Now you go into these barber shops and hair salons, it's like an operating room. It's so clean. So they're really doing all these things. And so I think that's the spirit uh, that we see uh, in Florida and throughout America, of people uh, wanting to get back to business, but obviously wanting to do it in a way that's safe, not only because that's the right thing to do, but that's also, I think, what the customers want to see. They want to feel safe when they're going to these places. So we've got a lot to discuss. It's my honor to be able um, to introduce um, the vice president, who's really been a good friend um, of the state of Florida. We have a, a pretty exciting event later this uh, month in Central Florida with the launch. And I, I know maybe you're going to be there. I know I think the big guy is going to be there. So I'll certainly be there. We're looking forward to doing that. He's been a great advocate uh, for uh, the space industry, both in terms of NASA, but also the private sector. That's been a huge driver here in the state of Florida. And they've continued to do good things even through this pandemic and going to continue to do it going forward. So, so thanks for your support for the state of Florida. And thanks for all that you guys did through this. Anytime we needed anything, uh, you know, the task force and you guys were there uh, for, for folks like me here in these states. And so, so we very much appreciate it. Well, thank you very much, uh, Governor. It is, uh, it is good to be with you and, and good to, to be back in Florida uh, as, uh, as this state, um, as this state is really leading the way to open up America again. And I, I want to thank you for your leadership. Harris, thank you for your hospitality, uh, for your, your, uh, your long-standing leadership in this community, in this state. Uh, we appreciate you welcoming so many uh, men and women who represent the bulwark of businesses uh, here in Central Florida. I want to thank you all uh, for being with us today. I also know that um, you tapped your uh, lieutenant governor uh, to lead the executive committee of Florida's uh, reopen task force. And I I'm partial to number twos, Governor. So <laughs> I want to give people a chance to thank Stand Lieutenant up. Governor Jeanette Nunez, who is with us today. And what a great job. Uh, we've uh, <coughs> We've had, a, we've had an inspiring day in Florida. Uh, President Trump wanted me to convey his great respect and appreciation to the people of Florida and to all the businesses so well represented here because of the choices that you have made. And since we were last together in the middle of March, Governor, um, the truth is we slowed the spread. We flattened the curve. Mm -hmm. We saved lives. Now, all of us uh, mourn with those who mourn. We grieve for the loss of more than 90,000 of our countrymen, including several thousand men and women here in Florida. But it is undeniable because of the sacrifices that American families made in implementing the guidelines uh, that were issued by the Coronavirus Task Force in Washington, uh, the, the willingness of families uh, to be able to adhere to your guidance, Governor, 
uh, here in Florida, but really to implement the kind of social distancing which, which is all about putting the health of others first. Uh, we're getting there. And we are where we are today at a time when now all in all 50 states have begun the process of reopening their economies and beginning the American comeback. But it's a testament to the American people. And I want to say to the people of Florida, thank you. Uh, thank you for the sacrifices that you've made. Most especially, as we said today, Governor, visiting one of uh, your wonderful nursing home facilities uh, here in Florida. Um, I want to especially say thank you um, uh, for caring so much for the most vulnerable among us. I mean, to think, uh, you said there's 4,000 nursing homes roughly here long -term care. In, in long term care facilities here in the state of Florida, and fully 3,500 had no coronavirus cases at all. That is a tribute to an extraordinary group of caregivers, health care workers that I think deserve a big round of applause for caring for them. But it's also a tribute to, to folks that have been willing to not go see mom and dad, not go see grandma and grandpa, to re really be willing to put those principles into practice. Because we learned early on, uh, after President Trump tapped me to lead the White House Coronavirus Task Force, that um, seniors with serious underlying conditions were clearly among those most at risk for serious health outcomes. And people responded. And, Governor, your efforts here, your decisive efforts here to implement and enforce new raised federal guidelines for nursing homes and long-term care facilities, uh, your decision to restrict access to nursing homes, uh, and a whole range of, of, of policies, including the surveillance testing that you've deployed, uh, has made a tremendous difference. And I, I want to commend you uh, among the citizens of, of your state uh, uh, for the work that you've done. But in addition to the American people, in addition to our incredible health care workers, um, uh, President Trump and I feel just as strongly that we have to say thank you to American businesses, especially those in the, uh, in the tourism and hospitality business across this country and, and particularly here in the great state of Florida. The decisions that you made uh, to put the health of your employees to put the health of, uh, of people who come from all over the world to visit this great city and these incredible attractions was commendable. And I know it was unprecedented. Uh, I, but your willingness to ad adhere to federal guidance and make those choices, uh, I think, represented uh, the very best of what makes American business special. And so I want to invite a round of applause uh, for the leadership represented at this table and all of the businesses that were willing to put the health of your employees, the health of the people of Florida, and America first. Thank you very much. And it was at great cost. I was told, Governor, I'm, I'm sure you might have touted it, that in 2019, Visit Florida actually estimated that there was an all-time record 131.4 million visitors traveled to Florida to enjoy your beaches, to enjoy the sunshine, to enjoy all the great attractions that are represented here. I can tell you not too many years went by that the Pences didn't load the minivan and drive down from Indiana. <laughs> and uh, I'll tell you, your, your west coast, uh, Sanibel Island, Fort Myers, almost feel like a second home to our little family. Uh, and that's why, uh, Governor, for all the challenges that we've been through, I know the people of Florida and the President and I appreciate the steps that you are taking to safely and responsibly reopen uh, Florida to the people of this state and uh, the people of this country. Um, in a very real sense, uh, uh, Florida is leading the way uh, among a handful of states that step forward. Uh, and, Governor, I, I want to appreciate the fact, having been surrounded by epidemiologists in my current assignment for the last three months that you did it all on the basis of data. Thank you for that. Thank you for understanding that uh, the ability to reopen Florida could be implemented not just on a statewide basis, but also on a county by county basis. And I know that your, uh, your administration has looked at those areas that still have challenges and dealt with them differently than other areas of Florida where we've uh, seen significant declines or uh, 
or a very limited number of, uh, of coronavirus cases to begin with. And, uh, uh, and I'm here really to hear from these uh, great businesses about, about how we continue to move forward. I'm anxious to hear about, about your plans. I brought the Secretary of Labor with me, who among his responsibilities oversees OSHA, and I want to assure you uh, that, that OSHA, the Labor Department, the CDC, which recently uh, published uh, new guidance for the American people and detailed guidance that's available now at uh, the CDC website, uh, we're going to be a full partner uh, with your businesses uh, to give you and to give uh, Governor DeSantis your administration guidance for how we reopen these, uh, these great attractions uh, to the American people. But let me... Uh, let me also say, I, I want to thank you through the course of this ordeal with what so many of you have done. I was Somebody handed me a sheet on the way here. I'm told Walt Disney World donated 35,000 N95 masks to the Florida Division of Emergency Management, as well as 700,000 pounds of food to Florida food banks. I think that's worth a round of applause. Over the past two months, I'm also told that SeaWorld Parks and Resorts collectively donated more than 41,000 pounds of food to food banks and charities across America. And thank you for that generosity. Just truly remarkable. And Universal Orlando donated more than 15,000 ponchos to the city of Orlando to local fire departments uh, as critical PPE for first responders and also donated 30,000 pounds of food to Central Florida Food pantries. So uh, let's hear it for uh, Universal Orlando as well. Thank you so much. And because of your uh, generosity, um, families were able to see their way through this challenging time. But today is really about opening back up. I'm glad the governor mentioned I'm, it's great to be in Florida and I'm going to be back here in a week because um, uh, not too far from here, for the first time in almost 10 years, we're going to send American astronauts back to space on American rocket from Kennedy Space Center. And uh, I know how important uh, the uh, space enterprise is here in the history of Florida, but I want to tell you, President Trump and I know that the, uh, uh, the history of, uh, of space that will be written is going to be greater still, and Florida will play, and the Space Coast will play a key role in that. Uh, with that, let me, uh, let me I, I'm, I'd like to invite the Secretary of Labor to maybe make a few thoughts, and then, uh, uh, and then uh, Governor, I'd just love to hear from uh, yep. as many of uh, the leaders here as time permits, because um, I, I want to tell you that uh, I think there's, there's no one in America that wants to open up our economy more than President Donald Trump. And uh, uh, for all the sacrifices the American people have made, for all the sacrifices that your great businesses have made. Um, uh, we're anxious now. We're anxious now as cases are declining, not only here in Florida, but all across the country, as positivity rates among the expanded testing is declining across the country. Hospitalizations are declining, and um, uh, looking at seven-day averages, um, most importantly, uh, fatalities are declining across the country. Now, now our focus is is on two missions. Number one is to continue to make sure uh, that, we, uh, that we provide our health care workers, we provide guidance to states across the country to continue to confront and uh, hasten the day that we put the coronavirus in the past. But our other mission now, working closely with your governor, is to, to uh, open up America again. And uh, with, uh, with that, I just, again, want to thank, I want to thank your governor, I want to thank uh, your Lieutenant Governor, I want to thank uh, all the people of Florida for what you've done uh, and have already begun to do uh, to bring Florida and to help bring America back. So thank you very much. And uh, with that, I'd welcome some remarks, Governor, from uh, Secretary Eugene Scalia, our Secretary of Labor. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Uh, uh, pleasure to be with all of you. And Governor, so good to be uh, here with you. I've known uh, the Governor since uh, he first ran for Congress. And I was introduced to him and was so impressed by his intellect, uh, his commitment, and, and his uh, dedication and service to the nation. And uh, it's just a treat to be here with you and to see the whole nation now recognizing what a great leader uh, we have here. Uh, well, the, the, the health emergency that we've been confronting in which the, the Vice President has done such an extraordinary job together with, with the President in addressing has had a very great impact. 
impact we know on, on American workers and on the economy, and, and particularly uh, in, in this sector of the economy. We put out a very difficult jobs report a couple weeks ago, uh, but more than a third of the 20.5 million Americans that we said had uh, gone off payroll uh, in April we're, we're from this industry, from leisure and hospitality, so we appreciate how, how difficult it has been for, for you, your businesses, and, and for your workers. Uh, fortunately, um, the President, Vice President, and, and actually Congress, too, acted with extraordinary speed to take measures to address some of the impact this was having back in March. We had three major pieces of legislation in March. Uh, never before had there been uh, mandatory paid leave for uh, private sector uh, American workers, but that was enacted, signed by the President with 100 percent reimbursement uh, to those small businesses by uh, the Treasury Department. Uh, we got the Paycheck Protection Program, which was loans to small businesses uh, to help keep them afloat, but particularly importantly, to help keep those workers connected to uh, the business so that we could get those businesses back up quickly as we re re reopened. Uh, we estimate that about 50 million workers were able to be kept on payroll through that program. And also in the CARES Act, the President uh, signed an unprecedented unemployment compensation benefit. We would never had uh, such a significant federally funded unemployment supplement. It was the right thing to do in this context. $600 a week, again, unprecedented, but a very swift measure to uh, help the American people. Uh, now, we're, as the Vice President said, we're, we're pivoting. We're, we're focused on reopening. Uh, for us at the Labor Department, that means even as we uh, help ensure that people who are entitled to unemployment benefits get them, uh, we're focused as well on ensuring that uh, as we reopen and jobs become available that people uh, who can go back to work do, uh, because it's obviously always our preference to have them back at work. Uh, as the Vice President said, we're uh, focused, too, on a safe reopening. And uh, OSHA, part of the Labor Department, uh, ha was the component within our department first engaged with the coronavirus. Uh, providing guidance to employers and workers on how to go about their uh, jobs safely. We'll continue to do that. And as concerns arise, we'll continue to respond, too, and make sure that uh, workplaces are safe. I've been so impressed with measures that uh, I see businesses across the country taking to assure their customers uh, and their workers uh, of that safety. Um, so I, I, I look forward to this discussion. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to be here. Uh, but, you know, more importantly to you, there are tens of millions of Americans who would be pleased to be here. And, uh, and I think we can uh, uh, have confidence that we've got a president, vice president, and governor who want to help make that happen, who want to uh, reopen as promptly, safely as we can. And we also have a president and vice president who understand the policies that gave us that extraordinary economy that we were enjoying uh, until early March and, and know how to get us back there. So thank you for having us. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary. And um, uh, Governor, do you have a, a cue or you yeah, want to well, get started? Yeah, I think what we do, well, one, let me, uh, I think our chief financial officer, Jimmy Petronas, or I think, is that you? Yeah. yeah. So he, Jimmy's here. Um, he's in the cabinet in Florida. So thank you for your service. I thought maybe just Appreciate start you. off with, um, we have three, I think we have three representatives from three different theme parks. Great. Obviously, when you think Orlando, uh, you, you think the theme parks. I, as I think obviously you guys know, put out last week, theme parks can submit plans for reopening, approved by the key local official, and then, then we'll entertain them in, as a, in the state. Obviously, I want to get to yes, so I think if you work with your local, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Um, so why don't we just start with uh, maybe John Sprouse from Universal, then we'll go around uh, Disney and then SeaWorld and say, what do you guys, uh, I, know you've, I know you guys have both done some of the outdoor stuff, or Disney's doing that today. But in terms of seeing some of these, uh, some of these parks, uh, what are you looking at? What, what would the safety look like? And um, what, uh, what, what are other things we should be thinking about? Sure. Th thank you, Governor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice President, for being here and giving us this opportunity. Um, we did begin the process with respect to Universal last week. We were able to open part of our CityWalk complex, which is our dining and entertainment complex. And we hope we are able to prove that it can be done in a very safe, responsible manner. How's it going? Uh, it's going extremely well. Uh, it has been, we've adopted a number of procedures in terms of safety, in terms of social distancing, and in terms of sanitation. We've asked our, our guests to participate in that by doing certain things, and we've had almost no negative pushback from anyone, whether it be our team members or our guests. They understand it, they're cooperating, and they're actually 
welcoming the opportunity to be able to get out and to get out and have a meal, walk around the lagoon and, and start to get back to normal. And what we're hoping is we're going to be able to take those learnings and all the work that we've been doing over the last couple of months, almost from the time we were closed, at some point we knew we'd be able to reopen it. How would that look differently as we learn more and as we get more um, scientific evidence about what we can do? John, how did you do that? Uh, the governor and I just grabbed a burger at Beth's Burgers. It's pretty good, by the way. <laughs> uh, what, 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 but uh, do, are, do, are you, you're, the governor's authorized uh, a 50 percent occupancy, so you've mm -hmm. implemented that. Are there other uh, unique things that, that, that you're doing at City Walk? Uh, that's, uh, that you're seeing are effective? Not, I, I think not so much unique as putting a number of layers. As we've talked to uh, medical professionals, they've talked about the safety issues as so, sort of being a number of layers of Swiss cheese. And if you look at any particular slice of Swiss cheese, there are holes. But if we can layer in enough of those slices, we can protect people as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So we've implemented temperature checks both for our team members and for guests. We are currently having all our team members and our guests wear masks. We've gone through with each and every uh, venue and set up the social distancing um, markings so that people don't have to figure it out. We've tried to figure it out for yeah. them. Right. We have one thing that we have found that has worked really well is we brought additional management staff back that weren't specific to any venue. And we have them just acting as ambassadors throughout the area. Hmm. So they're helping people understand here are, you know, please put your mask on. Here are what we're trying to do. Here's where you can go to wash your hands. Here's where these. Um, the antiseptic uh, hand sanitizers are. We've done things like in entering and exiting every restaurant or shop. You go in one way and out the other, mm. and there's san hand sanitizer at the front end and the back end. And we're going to try to apply that with respect to our rides as well. We'll reduce capacity so that we can maintain social distancing. And there are, there are some attractions we're going to have to change. We have interactive play areas where children can play. We probably won't open those up initially because it's just we, we're not able to control it. We want to be able to control it so everybody can feel safe. Because I think that's probably the most important part as we open up our industry, both here and the rest of the country. If people feel that they're safe, if people feel that we're doing it right. responsibly, they're going to come. Are you open to, uh, I mean, is Universal City Walk open to anyone at this point, or are you limited, limiting it geographically or to no. Floridians? City Walk is open to anyone. Just anyone right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Really, uh, great insights. And, and thanks th again. I I was speaking uh, directly to these great attraction and uh, resort operators when I said just th thanks for rolling your sleeves up and doing the hard thing. Thank you. Uh, I hope you, you tell tell your whole team how much we appreciate them because there was I think Governor when you and I talked uh, early on we recognized that um, people come to Florida from all over the world <laughs> and. Um, uh, it, it, the, the people of Florida and these great businesses recognized that potential vulnerability of having people come here, congregate, and then go back across the country. And uh, we couldn't be more grateful. It was a well, great service. We're grateful to you for your support. We're grateful to the governor. The governor has been terrific through this entire process. The communication and the expectations have been great, and we Good. just want to do our part. We think yeah. we can open safely and responsibly throughout our industry and get Florida back where it needs to be. I think that, I mean, the one thing that I've was, I, interested in at the very beginning of this, but I think it's been really proven is, you know, this is a virus that just doesn't transmit as well outdoors in, in outdoor open air environments. It, it, it likes the enclosed spaces. That's why you see like the meat packing plants have major outbreaks, prisons, unfortunately, long term care facilities. That's why the number one source of outbreaks is usually the home because you're in close sustained contact with people. And if you look at Florida's tourism base, a lot of this is linked towards outdoor activity. I mean, beach, boating, fishing, even your parks. And I know you have a mix of things, um, but a lot of times, you know, you're walking outside, getting on a ride or whatever. And so, you know, I think use that to our advantage. Um, I was really glad to see the CDC come out with the, with the water um, guidance about that not being a source of transmission. I think Blizzard Beach and these things, I mean, to me, is probably going to be pretty low risk in 90 degree weather uh, people are in water. So that's a good thing. And, and people can see that and hopefully are, can appreciate the science. So, so with Disney. Well, and one of the things that I want to commend to your attention, I'm sure your teams already have it, was the Department of Homeland Security, we think, completed the first work on the impact of humidity and sunlight on the coronavirus. And, uh, 
the half-life on this virus drops to infinitesimally small uh, with, uh, with humidity and daylight. And so I just encourage you to factor that into your policies. I know that uh, the governor and his team will be, will be taking that into account. And I would say throughout this whole thing, we always said golf, all this stuff, just, just make the basic accommodations. Not had an outbreak that we've been able to determine from a golf, not having an outbreak from related to beach, not an outbreak related to, I mean, I'm sure maybe you've had transmission somewhere, but I, I mean, it's not something you would think that if this was something you would see it a lot and we haven't seen it a lot, but like the vice president with this heat, you know, people are saying, don't touch the flag stick and go, and look, be safe. But like, honestly, if I touch it and I have the virus and you're in the group behind me 10 minutes later, the sun's going to nuke that. I mean, like it's going to be totally gone. So, but I think that that, that was a great uh, study that they did. Um, so we have, um, you know, Disney, uh, we've got George Caligridis from Disney. Uh, so what are you guys, I know that Disney did Shanghai already. Uh, how's that going? And then w how, what are you guys thinking about what you need to do to be back in Central Florida? Okay. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, Governor and Mr. Vice President. Shanghai opened on May 11th and actually has had uh, a great response. Um, I think you probably heard in the media that the tickets sold out in the first few minutes for the first day. A lot of what happens there, of course, Did, is did you limit at all the number of people? Did you? Yes. Okay. Yes. 20% uh, uh, on the first week, and the maximum uh, will be 30%. Hmm. So, uh, you know, we need to get more over time. But from a safety perspective, from a guest acceptance perspective, we, uh, we really we had a great launch. And um, great. so those are the learnings for us that we'll certainly consider when we think about uh, opening here. And as you said, uh, today we open Disney Springs, uh, partial opening, and the rest will open next week. And I'm sure tonight we'll have discussions about water parks. So thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> um, that's great news, though, that uh, CDC um, made those changes. So, and I, I would, one thing that I, I would also uh, like to just mention, uh, the Secretary mentioned the programs for employees. Our business won't all come back at once. This is going to take time. And these programs for the employees that have come uh, from the government are really helpful, and we really appreciate it. So I, I want to thank you for that. And the speed at which that happened um, was important. And uh, the message really is that we're going to need that for a while because everybody's not going to come back in one week. It's going to take time. So thank you for that. George, thank, thank you. I just, I again, want to commend Disney. I remember the meeting in the cabinet room at the White House, and I don't, am I right in remembering that uh, Disney had never closed more than a day in the history of this company? We closed before? on 9-11, and we closed two days for a hurricane, and that's it. So, yeah. Remarkable. It's, it's unprecedented. Well, it, it was a, it was a uh, uh, um, tremendously admirable decision uh, that you made. Uh, and I, I, I hope you'll convey. Tell me about the assistance. So uh, paycheck protection, we also have made lending facilities available for larger companies. I'd, I'd love to ask this, too, of, uh, of everybody. What's been most helpful up to this point? Uh, I was on Capitol Hill yesterday, Governor. We're, um, we're in early discussions about the possibility of another phase of support, but what, what's been most helpful? I think for our company, really the unemployment, uh, the stimulus check, and then the unemployment. Uh, for our company, again, we're a, a much larger corporation. The other programs are very important to other companies, so I don't want to, you know, mislead you. But certainly for us, um, because we have such a huge workforce, and uh, most of that workforce is impacted by this, so it, they're important for us. I got it. Uh, of course, George, there was thank the you. There was the $1,200 stimulus check as well right. for each one of those workers. Right. Great. Can we uh, just finish up maybe the theme parks. Mark Swanson, SeaWorld. Yeah, uh, please. Yeah, we were. Uh, I think I was in SeaWorld um, a couple months ago. I mean, maybe probably time into mid February. Got to look around a little bit, see what's going on. So, wh what are you guys thinking about? Yeah. Well, thank you again for for uh, you and the vice president being here. You know, we represent SeaWorld and in Bush Gardens down in Tampa. And I'll, I'll echo what, what my colleague said. You know, one thing I like about the industry is there's, there's not a monopoly on, on safety. We all come together very well, and I think you're going to see us employ very similar safety protocols. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we're, you know, at SeaWorld, and I'm sure the others, we're very confident in our ability to execute on this. We are even more 
an outdoor park than, than probably anybody. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. So we're looking forward. I, I know uh, your announcement on Friday that submit the plans and we want to get to yes, that, that was a real shot in the arm for us. And so thank you for that. And we look forward to um, getting in front of our local uh, authorities and then, and then eventually to you. And we're excited to, to move forward. Mark, what's your timing on that? I, I know the governor's uh, uh, opened the door. You all are putting it together. Um, yeah, we, we've been working. These guys have started to open up a little bit. Yeah, so I think from, from kind of the, the time we get the approval, it's, it's a couple weeks, uh, two, three, four weeks to ramp up, get our employees back, and, and get, get everybody in there. So uh, we're going to try to get in front of, uh, get, get our things moving as quickly as possible, and then get the approval and move forward. But we would probably be, uh, obviously, then sometime in June. Yeah, sometime in June. Yeah. Before the end of June. Yep. Yep. Well, well, all, all of what you're doing is going to be very exciting to an awful lot of people <laughs> around the country, I promise you, and even more kids. Uh -huh. uh, so very well. Yeah, done. if we can get the approval, uh, we, you know, and, every, and, and the data keeps moving in the right direction, we'll, uh, we'll be ready. Um, what's uh, had, in terms of the federal assistance, uh, direct financing to families, paycheck protection, lending facilities that have been available have you yeah i would echo i think the the uh the the payroll tax credit early on was was helpful for for our company uh the stimulus checks are, are good the the, the uh, additional unemployment benefits are, are are certainly welcome we're uh you know the, the main street lending program i think for us uh with our existing credit facility may not work out uh doesn't look like it's going to work out and um, that's something we may we may come back with just some some comments, you know there there's some uh, w there's some constraints in that program just with your existing uh, debt facility and having capacity and things like that. We've already accessed the public markets. Uh, if there was a way we could still access the Main Street lending, you know that's something we would probably certainly look at. Uh, but our read of that is that may not work out just for us. I'm sure it'll work out for a lot of others though. So. Okay, great, got it. So, uh, Thank you. And thanks for what SeaWorld did yeah. and Bush Gardens. Really <laughs> incredibly hard choices. But um, it, it was very inspiring to me, Governor, when the President brought everybody together in the Cabinet Room in the um, tourism and hospitality industry. And uh, everybody said yes. Everybody said we'll do it. Everybody put safety first. And uh, um, in yes. your cases, it impacted families and communities all over the country. So thank you. And thank your whole team. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we can, so theme park's important. Uh, maybe get a, an update from some of the restaurants uh, about how that's going. Uh, so Carol uh, Dover does the Restaurant and Lodging Association. So she'll probably want to say something about the lodging when we get to that. But, but the restaurants, uh, how are things going? How did it work with, we actually tried to do, I think I told the VP, when everyone was shutting down the restaurants and bars, we closed bars. I wanted to do 50% in restaurants because I thought that is distance. That's low risk mm -hmm. if you do right. But what was happening, I had people telling me that the restaurant across the street was doing 100%. I was like, you know what? So then we did it. Um, but then we obviously wanted them to get back. So we were a little slow out of the gate, but doing the outdoor in 25. Now we have outdoor in 50. And um, so how's that going? Well, first, I want to thank you, Mr. Vice President and Governor, for allowing me the opportunity to talk to you today about hotels and restaurants in Florida. Tourism is the economic engine of our state. We have about 1.5 million hospitality employees, but unfortunately, just under a million of them have been laid off. But thanks to our great governor, who was leading, I believe, the country in trying to get us open back up with the 50 percent, um, it has begun to really change the dynamics, I think at 25 percent, we knew it would be hard, but at 50 percent, we're seeing uh, a rebound and hopefully will continue. I want to say thank you very much. How much was that blunted, Carol? We just, as I said, we just grabbed some lunch today <laughs> here. Um, um, Beth, who runs four uh, great burger places, told us that she, through delivery and through pickup, right that she'd still been able to maintain about 20 percent revenue. So right. did you see that at all? But Because Secretary Scalia and I just heard uh, at, at the White House uh, with restaurant operators from around the country that, did, did I hear right, like one in four of the job losses in America today are people that work in restaurants alone, let alone hotels right. and hospitality. So, yes. But 
how much were people, how much was the delivery, pickup, how much did that sustain? Huge. We were incredibly grateful when our governor said that we could continue with takeout curbside delivery. I've never seen so much creativity. Grocerant started, and we've seen all kinds of, this governor's been very uh, effective in getting local mayors to allow the streets to open so they can roll we right here. We also did uh, Park. alcohol delivery. Alco I was so going to say that. But that <laughs> so people would actually, the restaurants could deliver a meal and could That's deliver true. some Amazing. alcohol as it's well. It's been incredibly helpful. I want to say. And, and the, you told me that your emergency management team. Oh. Yeah, so at Tallahassee restaurants, I with the emergency, you know, because they have everyone working, so they cater in. Yes. And I was like, you got these these local restaurants, so some of them really were yeah, able to, uh, to do well. Life. Yeah. So that made a difference. Yes, that sir. preserved some oh, yes, of the sir. revenue. It through. absolutely did. And what really made the difference is what you've hit on with the PPP and Phase Three. Okay. Um, if I may, though, without sounding at all ungrateful because we are so appreciative of what you've done. There are a few things that we hope in phase four mm -hmm. um, that will be addressed. One, of course, is liability protection and hold harmless agreement. That would be something I know that we're, we're looking um, and hopeful for. Um, extending the loan coverage from eight weeks to 24 weeks. I'm sure these are things that, that you've heard um, before. The, the loan ratio of 75-25 has been incredibly challenging for all of our members because they don't have any staff, so, or most of them didn't have a lot of staff. So we're hoping that either that goes away or 50-50, but preferably it would go away and extending that, that June 30 higher date to December 31st would be incredibly helpful. Um, there's a lot of other issues, but I, I just want to say thank you. And I want to end with, um, First of all, COVID hit this. So can, I, can I just yes, add sir. in there? Because I'm, I'm sure this is just as relevant. Yes, sir. Some of these great attractions and, and hotel and resort operators is the liability issue. Yes, sir. I, I, I will tell you that we're, uh, we're in discussions about that right now. And um, uh, our objective is to continue to create the kind of uh, uh, products at the federal level, CDC, OSHA, that, that will give businesses and other enterprises the ability to operate confidently but I, I, I want to assure you that we're very aware of that we want what I think Senator McConnell raised the issue early on um, the president has our team looking at it but we understand the challenge that that faces but we uh, the American people want to get back to business and then, but uh, we, we want businesses to have uh, they have the kind of guidance that you can operate confidently and yes, and know that uh, that you'll have the kind of liability protection uh, if you conform with those labor standards, if you conform with those operating standards. Thank you. So the last thought I have is that you know COVID obviously hit all of us severe and sudden, like out of nowhere. But uh, we have um, the amendment two will be on the ballot here in Florida to raise our minimum wage to $15 an hour. And there will be nothing more catastrophic to an industry that's already been hit as hard as we've been hit mm. to have to be faced with mm. an increase in the minimum wage. So I know that that is something that we would love any assistance and help, but we're going to continue to try to fight for our industry and hope that um, we can get our employees back to work, but not be hit with that in November. Mm. And thank you very much for the opportunity today, Mr. Vice President. Thank you, great insights. And uh, give, give everybody in, the, in the, the whole association our very best. Um, we just heard so many great stories at the White House this week. My first job was as a dishwasher at Jean's Cafeteria in Columbus, Indiana. And uh, you know, our, our restaurants, our hotels, these are, these are where our communities happen. And so uh, tell everybody we appreciate all the, the hard work, sacrifices that they've made. It's made a difference. Governor? Gene Lee, CEO of Darden Restaurant. So they have uh, a lot of great brands, including the, the Capitol Grill, and they're headquartered right here in Central Florida. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> thank you, Governor, and thank you, Mr. Vice President, for allowing us to be here today. Thank you, Gene. Um, I'm not going to reiterate all the safety precautions that we're taking as our, our peers are taking, I would just add a few qualitative statements. Number one, our employees feel safe doing what they're doing. 
They believe in, in our processes and procedures. We are getting no pushback from our team members. Mm. They want to come back to work. They feel as though the environment is safe with the policy and procedures and practices we put in place. Our guests feel comfortable in our restaurants. They don't understand, um, if anything, they, they push back on the 50 percent capacity issues. They don't understand why they can't, more people can't come in, the place is wide open, da, da, da. But they feel safe in our, in our environment because of the practices and procedures that, that we have put in. Um, I also would say in closed spaces, in, in restaurants like ours, there's a, we transfer more air than any other environment because of our hoods. Because of the, the hoods that we use over our kitchen equipment, we're transferring mm. the air inside mm. our restaurants at a much more frequent pace mm. than what you're seeing in, in, in a normal enclosed environment, yeah. which sense. we believe helps make the indoor space even, yes, even more safe. Right. Um, one comment on, on um, PPP and those types of programs. Well, the best thing in the programs for us was the employee retention tax credit. Mm. That enabled me to pay 150,000 people for three weeks that weren't working. True. And that is something that, that has got a cap to it, that we'd like to see that cap removed. And we would like to see you relook at that in phase four to help us keep people that we don't have an opportunity for today, that we may be able to keep them connected to our company and bring them back as our business continues to grow in the future. Great. Thank you. Great. Uh, very helpful. Very helpful. Um, I appreciate the insights. And uh, just, just thanks for what you've done. It's a great company, great restaurants. You guys have, um, Capital Grill has some patio seating too, right? Some of them do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what about your other brands? Yeah, Yard House has some, some yeah. big patio seating. So we're, especially in Florida, Bahama Breeze has huge patios. So those are, you know, we've got a restaurant on the water down in Tampa with, 300 patio seats that's doing fantastic since we've opened it back up. Yeah, the, so um, but the, like the air, so CDC did some study, I think it was a restaurant in China, family came from Wuhan to a different part of China, and they tried to say like in the direction of the AC, but if you look at who got infected, it really didn't. There were people in the opposite end who got it, and then there were people right at the table who didn't, and there, so I, I think it was just trying to say enclosed environment, but, um, I think that's a good point about if you have that, that does make a make a big difference in terms of um, in terms of lowering the risk. Um, I think we got another. Um, I think Patty Nuzo from. So I mean, this is when a restaurant can't do certain things. Obviously, that that has downstream impacts, and so I think she can talk to to some of those um, in terms of how that's affected her part of the industry. Yeah. Thanks, Patty. Yeah, so thank you for having me here today. So um, we have a family-owned restaurant equipment business, and we sell to restaurants of every size and shape. And we have, um, you know, we've seen a, a decrease of about 65 percent of our sales. And one of the things that, that was very helpful for us was the PPP loan. Uh, we were able to get it swiftly. We appreciate the, the fact that the government stepped up and created a program. How many so employees do you have, Patty? Uh, we have about 30 right now. Okay. And we were able to keep everybody employed. We are right. fortunate that we do business with a local community bank, and they got it funded right away. We put our staff to work. They're, they've been researching products that we never thought we would have to know about. Um, our, our buyers have learned about hand sanitizer and, and masks and, um, you know, you name it, to-go containers. And as they've, as the restaurant industry has, has kind of evolved, you know, from the takeout to the 25 percent to the 50 percent, the needs of our customers have, have changed. And so it's allowed us to keep everybody on staff and, and be ready for that. You know, that whether it was in the beginning with ordering takeout containers, whether it's now with masks and barriers and, and things like that. So, That's great. so I, I do appreciate you having me here today. We are a member of NFIB, and, and I appreciate you giving small business a voice at the table. Oh, you and better we believe it. I just want to see, see the, the customers come back to the restaurants. And Are you selling a lot of those, like, part I've seen different restaurants now just kind of put up, like, a partition. Yeah, great are question. You, is that, that seems to be, people have started ordering them. Yeah. Yeah. So at, as I saw the casinos evolves, have done you know, it too. Kind of they have like these because the casinos, I think in Biloxi or somewhere. So like there's just a, there's a partition in front of the between the slots and then even the card tables. There's all that. So that may be uh, that may be a wave uh, of the future. We'll see. Well, a lot of our manufacturers have started 
constructing plexiglass barriers. They have things that are on wheels. They have things that go between the tables. You know, I, I mean, on the on the table. Well, let me do. do uh, uh, I can ask you or, or ask Jean or, or Carol. Do, do you expect these some of these changes to remain? Are you going to as you're retrofitting some of the restaurant environments? Do you what, will, what will you keep gonna, some of them over the long haul? No, I think that anything that we're gonna, going to do will be very temporary. Okay. I think that what we're wrestling with is the expense to implement that and then to think maybe three, six, eight weeks we're going to take it back down. Right. I'm not sure I can get a return on that and that investment. And so we're, we're, we've got plans to be able to retrofit some of our restaurants to create um, some social distancing. Um, but we're, we're hesitant to make that investment today because we, we, would have, we have to be committed that we're going to operate that way for six months. Yeah. But it's not how we would design a restaurant. You wouldn't feel, you wouldn't feel great in the restaurant long term with the, with the barriers that we'd have to it. build. Yeah, just be curious. If you did 100%, what would be the spacing in between? I mean, would it? I mean, I'm four, just four feet. First of all, in a restaurant, you never get to 100%. Yeah. On my best day, I get to 60% of occupancy yeah. because of the inefficiency of seating. Right. Mm. Unless it's a bar business, you've always got twos at four tops, so on and so forth. So 60 is a great day for me when I'm at 60% of occupancy, mm. X bar. Um, and so you'd have like four feet. And what I think is interesting, and this is why when we talked earlier in March, when you're in a restaurant, you're back is always to anybody you don't know. You come in with your four people, you sit around a table, you're all facing in. But away from you, right. where everybody else is sitting, there's no transmission going back and forth. So as we, as we think about it and we look at our environments, we believe that as we sit today, we could sit every table and we'd still feel really good about the safety of the environment for the consumer right. and for the team member. Well, and, I, and Patty, thank you. Great insights again, Gene. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We're, um, uh, the president will actually be in Michigan uh, tomorrow, and um, American manufacturing has stepped all the way up, mm -hmm. and businesses large and small around the country. So done a great job. So thank you. Uh, great. What, uh, why don't we talk about some of the hotels and, and lodging? So yeah, maybe please. Mr. Rosen can, can kind of start off. I think he had mentioned some stuff to us backstage, but you obviously are play host to major events. I know you've done major political events. I know you do weddings. I know you do uh, business conferences, and then obviously host a lot of uh, a lot of tourists coming in for the park. So uh, what's the path uh, back um, in terms of safety if there were no government restriction just said you you be safe how would you handle it S spent a couple of years with uncle sam and um, learned a lot of lessons <laughs> one of them that has guided me for much of my business career is kiss keep it simple stupid i don't think the answer is very complicated. We want everybody back to work, right? As quickly as possible, right? How do we do that? Large, small, medium-sized hotels, restaurants, attractions, how do we do that? You make an announcement that our goal is to get everyone back to work quickly. Really? Yes. Two provisions. One, open your restaurant, your attraction, hotel. Screen every customer, every client, every guest that comes into your facility. Number two, every single day, screen every one of your associates, your employees, to make sure they're healthy. Wow. Is it that simple? Yeah. You have a clean environment 
and the folks that are coming in to your facility have been screened. What about restrictions? What about them? What about them? Perfect example of its restrictions. Universal opens, city walk. Screening, no masks. Disney will open. Screening and masks. That's their choice. That's their choice. Right now, we screen in the one hotel that we have open. Out of the eight, we screen all of our associates every day. I've been screened twice today. And every guest that walks in is screened. That ain't complicated. <clears throat> it will get people back to work so quickly and the private sector will once again feel as though they are in command of their own lives. It seems overly simplistic, doesn't it? But it'll work. And if we don't get people back to work quickly, it's all over. It's all over. Orlando is suffering. Orlando is struggling. The hospitality industry is in deep depression. But there's hope. I spoke with the governor and the vice president a little bit. They were so kind. They let me speak. They let me babble for a while. He said the convention center, the second largest in the United States of America, cannot have a gathering to use the language that's being used, of more than 10 people. What? We can accommodate 200,000. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Just lost 30,000 AAU volleyball players. Our gatherings are more than 10 people. So, Governor, my hope and my prayer is that as we move into phase two, the convention center will be a convention center, not an arena or a stadium, so we can get back to business. My hope and my prayer is that restrictions will, will be, for all intents and purposes, eliminated. And let the owners of the establishments do what they believe is appropriate. If they are sloppy and people enter the establishment and they're concerned, they will not patronize that facility. Isn't that what free enterprise is all about? Right? So I apologize. I'm the least politically correct human being on earth. I apologize. I respect the two of you so much. I hope I haven't behaved too badly. <laughs> but that's the rosy dream. Listen, we, we, we worked for Disney for a while, but things didn't work out. I bought a little motel in 1974 for $20,000 with all the money I had in the world. And today, we have 7,000 rooms, and we don't have a penny of debt. That's the only reason I'm able to keep doing what I'm doing now, which is paying salaries to my associates who are not working. How much longer can I do it? Only God knows. So thank you for this opportunity. I hope I haven't embarrassed myself. I apologize.
Thank you, Harris. You have to say that like you really mean it, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Harris. Thanks, thanks for the stirring words. And thanks for the generosity of your employees. And thanks, thank you for your, uh, your rugged individualism. We'll get this opened up. Thank you, sir. <laughs> we'll get this opened up. We'll get Orlando and Florida and America working again. Yeah. So God bless you. We'll get it done. All right. It's Danny Gakewad is a big hotel guy um, out of Ocala, and i um, like to get him to say a few words about what he's right. looking at in terms of the hotels. Thank you for the great opportunity, and thank you, Vice President and also President and my governor for opening up America. I will start with that. And I'll give my little story, just like Harry Rosen's story. I come as an immigrant. My whole family works in a business. My wife is here. My two sons are here. My manager is here because it does bother us. And, and I represent here more than 20,000 members of Asian American Hotel Owners Association, which are 99.9% .9 descent from, uh, from India, you know, and we all came with the American dream. I thought I have seen a 9-11. Then I thought I seen the worst recession in my lifetime. But I have never seen this, and I was never prepared for this, and I don't know what to do with this. But I'm going to give you some idea that what is happening in my associate world, which yeah. I am in very Good. much in touch. Governor, you know very well, I brought hundreds of people at the governor's house for the Diwali function. So I have a few hotels, and one of the hotel example I'll give you is a Holiday Inn, and which is a typical hotel. My occupancy in 2019, in uh, April, was 75%. And this is in the middle of nowhere. I'm not Orlando, I'm not Miami. I'm in Ocala. This year, 2020 April, sir, my occupancy is 12%. I am so grateful that you gave us PPP money, but I have no mathematical knowledge how to use it. Because there is no guest in my room how do I get my employees to serve them? My, my employees are ready, but, but whom would they serve? So that is our biggest dilemma. If, if I give you by number-wise, like a dollar-wise, it may make you more sense, Governor. In 2019, April, I did $340,000 in revenue. In 2020, I did $38,000. My monthly installment with the bank is $107,000. So sad. And, and how, how do I cope up? I don't know. I'm, I'm using whatever resources and I'll do it. And all, this is the same story. If you take from Boston, you go to Miami, from Miami to LA, most of the exits, anywhere you will see Asian American hotel owner will receive you. And I can guarantee you our association, which I represent today here, will echo the same thing what I'm saying. 50% of any hotel in entire United States is owned by Asian American Hotel Owners Association. Hmm. What Harry Rosen said is 100% truth, like I'm telling you, sir. And I'm going to tell you another thing. I'm watching TV and I'm watching this pundits and gurus and talking about liquidity in a hospitality industry. <laughs> sir, Mr. Vice President, I'm going to give you only one thing and one thing from here. If there is no guest, there is no dollar. If there is no dollar, don't even think about liquidity. Do we have a liquidity? Absolutely not. Are we managing somehow to go somewhere and scrap it? Yes. So who is helping us? After 2008 and 2014, the hotel industry was devastated with the housing industry. And that was the fault we found as a bank because they're giving a liberal loan. So when that happened, we learn our lesson, sir. And we went from 15, we went to CMBS loan. Please make a note of this name. This is the big, bad wolf. You have no idea what devastation CMBS will hack on us. 25% of any hotel in United States is funded by CMBS, President Trump, Vice President yourself, my governor, you can only save us by putting some legislation and put that big bad wolf in the cage. If you want it in a cage, 
he will finish us. And, and it's a very complicated loan. We never understood. It's a 200 pages. And the only uh, good part was that, that we don't give guarantee, but they can take my hotel. So now, if that, they act. So what do they do, Governor? I sent a letter from the lawyer two months back that, sir, please talk to me. You know, my other banks are talking. My credit union is talking. After spending $10,000 on one hotel only, I made a mistake in my life. Out of all my hotel, one CMBS, they will not communicate with me. They told me, no, we have no reason to communicate with you. They have right to come in my hotel any day they want. Me and my family is here today. We are only worried about that one loan in a craziest way. Banks are very good. President Trump, Vice President yourself, you guys have given a clear instruction to the banks and a credit union and financial. This is the only big bad wolf is out there, and this can destroy the families without fail. And you can, I can go on forever, but I don't want to take everybody's time. I got it. But, but that's what I want to tell you. Thank you, dear. Uh, <laughs> and PPP loan, I'll echo everybody else very clearly. <clears throat> PPP loan, we need to extend, sir. There's no way I can spend that money by June. I have 12 and 15% occupancy. And right. if you permit We're looking me, at it. A, we're yes, looking sir. at it. I, I didn't tell you that, Carol, but we're looking at it. <laughs> the president said that this week. Yeah, and a restaurant, sir. My restaurant is very famous. I win 10-time Golden Spoon Award. It's not a, like a mom and pop. Last year, Mother's Day, I did more than $20,000. This year, I did $2,500. So when everybody's talking about opening up America, so thank you. Thank you very much because we were choked. I can explain you choking like we were just dying. You let us breathe 25%, so we are breathing 25%. Governor is kind enough to open up 50%. We will shortly start breathing 50%. If you open 75%, sir, we will breathe 75%. And the, God bless that day when the America, as Harry Rosen says, when they open with the common sense, let us manage with our common sense. We, we are not monster. We're not going to sell you coronavirus. We're selling you food. We're giving you healthy rooms. So that's my request. But this administration, I command between 9-11 in 2008, and now this crisis, this is the fastest, quickest administration has ever acted in my career of 60 years of my life. I have never seen any president taken this much unprecedented decision, popular or dispopular, and send money home. Yes, now that money is home, but please give us some more rope so we can just survive. So you can understand if it's 100% is far away, then please give us a time for far away for 100%. I got it. <laughs> Loud and clear. And th uh, thanks for being so, I saw a lot of people nodding around it. I want you to know, I came here to listen. Yes. And, and I hope a lot of these people in the media are listening carefully. <laughs> because there's a, look, it's, look, the, and the, the governor's taken some criticism for the steps that he's taken to lead on opening up Florida again. Other governors are taking steps. I'm happy to report that all 50 states, governors have begun to open up their economies. But I, I appreciate all of you sharing the hardship that this has placed, not just on your enterprises, but on your employees, on your families. Um, and uh, I want you to know this, this president, this businessman turned president gets it, his vice president gets it. And uh, we're gonna continue to work our hearts out to safely reopen because we believe in the American people. We believe in the, the collective common sense and good judgment of the people of this country to do the right thing. You've all proven that throughout this pandemic and we're confident as we open, you'll continue to prove it. And thank you for your kind words about President Trump's leadership. I, I will tell you, it's- uh, We love your leadership. We love Trump. Yeah. We like bold step taken, not the executive sit on a desk and worry about where the air is moving. <laughs> my governor was there when he kept my state open and kept us alive, truthfully. Because we were wondering, really, I are got we going to get choked up or are we going to die or what? Yeah. He kept us alive. Yeah. Whatever breath is coming, we are fine and we are welcoming it. And yeah. imagine every this small hotel owner is a whole family is working. Right. I got it's it. It's not that only employee. We are I, all working. I grew up in a family business. <laughs> so you know, sir. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yes. And I'm taking you on the road.
Yeah. <laughs> I um, love this guy. We've got a, co I got a couple more people. I got yeah. Roger Dow, U.S. Travel yeah. Association. So do you uh, want to yeah, weigh Roger in on some Frank of the travel and, we'll, and lodging uh, that um, I this, know is... This has been terrifically uh, helpful. Well, thank you, Governor. Uh, it is my day job. I'm in D.C. I live in Florida, so I commute. In fact, it's easier to commute from Tampa to D.C. than it is to Potomac to downtown, <laughs> That's to right. the truth. But uh, I just want to put in perspective, especially for the, uh, uh, Secretary Scalia knows this, but we're such a labor-intensive industry, 15.8 million employees, one in 10 in the, in, are in the travel industry. Uh, 8.1 of those uh, million are unemployed. And when you look at it, that's 38% of all the workers in America unemployed from the travel and restaurant industry. Uh, but it gets worse. Uh, Harris used the word uh, depression. Uh, the Great Depression, uh, the worst year was uh, 1932, was 25.5%. Uh, the travel industry right now is at 51%. We're twice the depression, so we're in a depression. He hit, nailed it. Uh, we're going to lose $520 billion this year, 45% of all our revenue for the industry. It's nine times worse than 9-11, uh, <clears throat> as uh, my colleague over there said. Uh, we talked about flattening. We need to flatten the recovery. We need to get back much more quickly. If we can get back quickly, if we can even shrink the recovery from normal two years down to a year, uh, it's, uh, it'll be to the U.S. economy two, three hundred billion dollars. It'll be two million jobs. The quicker we can get this thing back. Uh, we, we put together, we got the whole industry together. Everyone in the industry, airlines, hotels, restaurants, all came together with one set of protocols. Uh, and guidelines that followed the White House guidelines, but all 38 sectors got behind one single set to give more, more confidence to people to get back. Uh, we need, you mentioned it, uh, Mr. Vice President, uh, we absolutely need uh, limited short-term protection from COVID liability. It's, you, these people can't go back to work unless they're, they're, they can not be sued, and you hit the nail on the head. Uh, that's so important. Uh, we need uh, relief. Uh, we've got to expand. PPP was good. Uh, they unfortunately left out the CVBs, the convention bureaus. It was a mistake. They're trying to fix it. But all the convention bureaus in the United States are getting zip, no money. And uh, we've got to get them fixed. And it's part of uh, number four. Hmm. Uh, and the most important thing, I think, is to get this thing back. Uh, they used to say, as goes GM, goes America. I say right now, as goes the travel industry, goes America. If the travel industry comes back, we're the first to go. We'll be the first to bring everything back. And we can bring the entire economy go because we're the front door of economic development. And some things that I loved hearing the president say at the restaurant meeting the other day to explore America. What a great opportunity. No Americans are going to Italy. No Americans are going to Spain. They're going to come to Florida. They're going to stay in America. And we ought to make it easy for them to do that. Uh, we talked to Mnuchin about a, a travel tax credit. It would be brilliant, uh, very easy to do. And you spend your money here in Orlando. You take a tax credit for it, go to a restaurant, take a tax credit, very simple to do. Uh, restore the meal and employee deduction. Isn't it silly when you go to a basketball game here, you can deduct the ticket, you can't deduct the hot dog. Something's wrong with that. Just a silly thing, but restore the tax deduction to get that done. And as I say... Well, you know the president's very enthusiastic about yes. that. Yeah, I know, I know, very much so. Yeah, among, I mean, yeah. um, among the pro-growth things... Yeah. And we, we talk about the restaurant industry, Gene. Uh, the president really believes that restoring the ability to deduct no meal question. expenses yeah. and to a large extent entertainment expenses uh, would be a way of catalyzing. Exactly. Catalyzing and, and, uh, uh, and getting people back into restaurants, getting people back into entertainment uh, around the country. Um, uh, and, and I will also tell you the president's uh, very enthusiastic about uh, pursuing a payroll tax. Right. Uh, payroll tax cut. We just Very actually, simple. Yeah. We've created relief on the business side, but we think yeah. they could put 7.6 percent take-home pay back in the pockets of uh, every working American. Well, last time I was in D.C., we sat with you and the President and Secretary of Commerce talking about how this industry needed the money. A week later, the CARES Act was in place, so I thank you for that. And the Governor, I'll close by thanking you. Uh, you're an example of how a state should be run. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think we've got Frank Sherman hasn't had a chance. So, Frank, why don't you weigh in? And Can I just say thank you, Roger, for those great comments? Yeah. Really. Well, they're true. Yeah, it's very easy insightful. Add value makes it true. I think <laughs> shrinking the recovery. I will tell you, the um, President believes it. I believe it. One of our chief economic advisors, who's uh, been a little more uh, conservative in his predictions about recovery, I think he 
He said publicly this week that seeing some of the early activity in states that are reopening, he's actually believing it's going to be quicker. Uh, we were, and, I, and I've heard several people, I've heard several people on this panel say, you know, you're, uh, you were saying your employees are glad to be back, your customers are glad to be back. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you told me Disney Shanghai, uh, which is a far away place, but you said they sold out in a day. Uh, and uh, you all have opened, opened parts of your attractions already, and you're already seeing people showing up and enjoying them. I think the, I think the American people are uh, look. They, everybody wants to be safe. I think I think the character of our nation shown forth. Yep. Because one of, one of the one of the truths of of the coronavirus is that we we and we continue to understand, don't we, Governor, about the number of people that are asymptomatic, people that literally have had the coronavirus and never knew they had it. I mean, younger, healthy people can have no symptoms. Other people, the majority of people have maybe flu-like symptoms, but then uh, vulnerable people with um, uh, immunodeficiency, obviously seniors with serious underlying health conditions, were particularly vulnerable. And for that reason, the American people said, well, we're all gonna, we're all gonna take these steps to protect, protect our neighbors, and our family, and our friends, our employees, our customers. And it was a, it was a real tribute. But I, I really do. I really do believe, and I'll tell you, the president really believes. As we continue to open up responsibly, we give the we give the people of this country the tools uh, to do so in a common sense way. I, I, I we we believe you're going to see this economy come back. You heard it. It's going to come back faster than ever because everyone in this room is willing to make it happen. Now we, we believe the together. third quarter. The president, yeah. I think, we believe his third quarter is a transition. Uh, but uh, but we, we actually believe we're going to. Once we get through a tough second quarter, we and I, I'd love to see. I see a lot of heads nodding from a lot of major <laughs> business leaders here, so I'm I'm glad to see agreement in that. I, I mean, just to piggy. I mean, I, we want obviously the whole country back, but I think different states may pursue this in different ways, and I think Florida has an opportunity to really, um, you know, you know, be be one of the leading engines um, here because I think that we've shown that when you're dealing with a virus like this and you really focus on the most vulnerable and, and really do a lot, things like long-term care facilities, uh, you know, you compare us to these states, nor Northeast, Midwest, much lower death rate, even though we have the most vulnerable population, that's because we've really put a lot of emphasis on protecting those vulnerable folks. So we're gonna continue to be doing that. Um, but I think we also realize that Fortunately, if you're under 50 and healthy, this is something that a lot of times you could be asymptomatic. Um, it's not something that um, um, is leading, fortunately, to, to, to a lot of deaths for people uh, who don't have underlying conditions. And actually, the CDC's report today, hospitalizations for under 18 are substantially less for COVID at this time in the season compared to influenza. So for as a parent, I mean, that's obviously something I love to see too. You guys as parks, bringing the kids, you know, kids are at lower risk. That's a great thing, and I think the data has borne that out. So, but we really want to be a, a leader in this nationally. I said last yeah. week, yeah, professional but. sports come to Florida if they won't let you play. It was funny. Some <laughs> of the governors had to go out and say, "Well, you can play in our states because they real." I mean, but it, it is. We we think we have a lot of opportunities, you know, to do things that um, you know will continue to to prioritize safety, but give people opportunity to get back on their feet. And so we want that to happen here. All right, well, look, Frank. Sir. And this, thank I you. think, Frank, you get the last word. All right. Thank you for that. And I do want to thank you and Mr. Rosen for hosting this. And uh, I, I am, I am saying my prayers. And I do feel we're blessed to have the right so team in the White House that have just rolled up their sleeves and made decisions and got it done. And we thank you. Thank you. Um, my company is Transportation Management Services. We do large events throughout the United States. Where the, uh, the the logistics behind when you have uh, 150 hotels and you need to run them all to the convention center, we figure out how the media and how the the attendee gets around. Uh, we also have uh, uh, do World Cup and some Olympics and uh, some political conventions. Um, so we're we last year we covered uh, carried a little over six million people. This year we haven't quite broke a million yet. And so you can see the impact. Um, but one thing, uh, uh, um, uh, um, Mr. Vice President, that I'd like to bring up is that we couldn't do our job without the motor coach industry. 
and we believe that uh, the tourism industry cannot come um, back without the bus uh, operators and the motor coach industry coming back. I just want to tell you that the motor coach industry is made up of 3,000 companies, mostly family businesses that you can appreciate. The industry carries 600 million passengers and drives about 8 billion in direct impact to Florida's economy and 100 billion, uh, 8 billion to Florida and 100 billion to the U.S. economy. There's over 2 million jobs related to the industry, um, directly and indirectly. Uh, we're being told that uh, because most of the income that a bus company makes is in the first part of the year. Hmm. And so this year they've been completely wiped out. And it, and it tries, uh, and they need that income to get all the way through the year. And that income is now gone. The American Bus, bus Association tells us that by October, 75% of those businesses will be gone will be shut down. They cannot make it unless they get a $10 billion grant. Um, so if I can, uh, while these bus companies are my vendors, um, I feel like I, rather than talking about my convention space business, I felt like I needed to speak for my, my vendors yeah. and the bus community and the motor coaches. And uh, anything that I could um, uh, be told to be able to help bring this uh, crisis um, about the motor coast industry. Whoever I can talk to, I would like to talk to them um, because it's, uh, it's going to be imp it's important. They're the link to all the, um, the parks here. Uh, they're the, the links to the, uh, you know, to bring in commuters to work in the cities. Um, uh, our company does hurricane evacuations for the states. They're the link that helps us uh, evacuate the critical need, the people that can't get out of uh, harm's way. The motor coach industry comes in and they help us evacuate. So that's what I wanted to say and I appreciate your time. Frank, thank you. Uh, thank you, duly noted. And uh, we'll take it back. 3,000 businesses. Yes. In uh, that uh, operate bus and motor coach companies. And uh, you said most of those are Small businesses, family-owned businesses. Yep. Some of them are in the audience today, and uh, Great. Uh, they, you know, people that move America around. That's right. Yeah, they, they do a great a job. Big, they just had a big rally in D.C. last week, where they had 800 buses come, drive around for a couple hours because that's you know they are trying to call attention to themselves. They're allowed to honk their horns from 12 noon to 12:02. <laughs> and they stopped. I, I didn't think they would stop, but they did. Um, so they really would appreciate any help that, uh, that you got it. Get them. Well, you're a great champion for them, well, and thank uh, you very much. Uh, I'll carry that back uh, as we think about uh, going forward. But uh, opening up America is how we fill up buses too, yes. Yes. right? And uh, all of you that work uh, in that industry, uh, it's a great industry, a safe operation, um, incredible record. Thank you for what you've done, and thank you for your sacrifices. We'll go to work, okay? Thank you, sir. Great. Uh, Governor? Well, Mr. Vice President, thank you for, for coming back down to Florida, and we'll see you again with the, the launch uh, later this month, which we're really excited about. And thank, too, to the, the President for uh, being very proactive anytime we needed anything being there, and then also the members of the task force. Anytime that, that we had um, issues, they were all very responsive. Uh, from uh, Dr. Burks, the Surgeon General, you name it. Uh, they were working 24 hours a day. You guys, you were working 24 hours a day. We were working really hard here seven days a week, but you guys had the whole country, so believe me, no one appreciates the hard work more uh, than me, having been, uh, having been through it with you all um, on just one slice of America here. Uh, but I think uh, going forward, we have so much potential. Uh, I, got, I remember when we went into mitigation and you guys did the 15 days, obviously we knew that there was going to be changes in the economy. And then I got the unemployment report on my desk, which was really a legacy from the prior to the coronavirus, 2.8% unemployment in the state of Florida at that time. Right. I mean, we were uh, clicking on all cylinders. I think all those fundamentals post-coronavirus can return. And, uh, and I think it's incumbent upon us to work as hard as we can to get, to get folks back to work and to get our businesses functioning again. And I really want to see 
which theme park opens the first water park? <laughs> Who's going to take the first move? My, my daughter's only three. She may be a little too young, but she does want to go to the wave pool at some point. So I can't promise you we'll be there yet, but, but maybe in a couple years. So, but, but thank you for, for doing it. Thanks to Harris Rosen for, for hosting us. I would say to anyone else out in the crowd and business leaders, if there are other things that can be done better in terms of um, you know, restaurant feedback, some of these other things, let us know, because my view is, is you guys all have an incentive to want to do everything as safe as possible, because as Harris Rosen said, if you don't do it, then people go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So if there's creative ways you're doing it, I, I don't think that the, a, a state or a federal can, can simply issue guidelines that will apply sensibly across a big diverse state like this. We've tried to approach it more locally, bottom up from the beginning, but we want to continue to do that. That's why I asked the parks to submit the plans. I'm not going to dictate the plans. You guys know your operations better than I ever will. So any industry, I think we want to take the same posture, uh, submit things, and obviously we're going to continue to be moving forward on this, but, um, but, but we have a responsibility uh, to, to, to make it work and, and to get to yes on all this stuff. So uh, my commitment to you is that I'm committed um, to doing it. And you know, we're going to continue to put safety first, but, but, but we've got uh, uh, to get people back, uh, back in business. And I think we've started that, and I think we've had some success, but we need to keep building off the momentum. Thank you, Governor. Great, great Well, Governor DeSantis, thank you uh, so much for bringing this forum together. Thank you for uh, uh, your leadership, and, uh, and uh, it's good to be with you uh, and Lieutenant Governor Nunez. Uh, uh, thank you so much for your hard work. Uh, I, I want to express my appreciation to Harris, not just for the hospitality, but for the candor. It was refreshing. Uh, and... Uh, um, I want you to know that we're going to carry back that common sense into this conversation and around the country. Uh, and all the great business leaders that are gathered here and have joined us around or are looking on, just thank you. First and foremost, thank you for what you've done. I mean, um, I know every American's heart uh, grieves for the more than 90,000 families that have lost loved ones. President Trump often says one is too many. But uh, the truth is, because of what you've done, uh, because of what you've done, we undoubtedly spared more families the heartache of loss. And I would say, Governor, that's particularly true for a destination state like Florida. Um, these great companies followed uh, the president's leadership and, and your actions here in Florida and took um, unprecedented action. And it's commendable. And I, I, I want to assure you that uh, you have the gratitude of your president, this vice president, and all of us on the task force, but I know the gratitude of tens of millions of Americans uh, who cherish your enterprises, who look forward to the day that they can be back, but they understand that, that uh, you made decisions that put their health and well-being first. Um, and what I would just say to each one of you is I'm, I appreciate the the determination and the tenacity that I've heard in every one of your voices. And I want to assure you that, man, I serve next to every day shares it and then some. And we are absolutely determined uh, in a safe and responsible way to reopen America. And we are working every day, not just with your governor, but with governors all across the country to make sure that the supplies are there. Um, that the testing capacity continues to scale. And I just want to encourage everyone with the news that we're getting there. We really are. And despite the fact that it, it seems like much of the commentary in the media is negative, um, the reality is that while we're increasing testing all across the country, cases are going down. It's a testament to what the American people have done. It's a testament to what American businesses have done. It's a testament to your leadership here in the state, and I would, I would say the leadership of our, our president and, and all of the agencies of the federal government that have been working on your behalf since, since the first domestic case of coronavirus was ever here. I mean, I hope you all understand the president suspended travel from China yes. before there was a single case of community transmission in the United States. 
He stood up the White House Coronavirus Task Force before there was a single case of community transmission of coronavirus in the United States. And I have to tell you, uh, from ever since he tapped me to lead the White House Coronavirus Task Force, I have been so inspired by our team at HHS, at CDC, at FEMA, our health experts who've worked seamlessly with your governor and governors around the country. But it's brought us to this moment where we can begin to reopen. And as I said at the beginning, I'll say at the close, uh, I think every American should take credit for the progress that we have made and be confident that we'll continue to give guidance, continue to work closely with each one of you. Uh, and I'm more confident uh, than ever that uh, sooner than most people think, we're going to open up America again and put America back to work. Thank you very Thank much. You. God bless you.